Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Lincoln Riley, the USC Trojans, making some noise in the transfer portal as they're set to hold a couple top targets on campus this weekend. The one we want to talk about the most, former UNLV quarterback Jaden Maiava, who as Michigan fans have a lot of experience with Jaden Maiava playing Michigan, coming in in the late fourth quarters and absolutely cutting up the Michigan defense. Though we had the conversation about Miller Moss. He seems to be your guy heading into 2024, but you look at the rest of that quarterback room, there's not a ton of depth in that quarterback room. And we said USC probably would like to add a quarterback into that room to kind of replace Malachi Nelson. And I don't think there's a better name to add than a guy like Jaden Maiava, who one, played phenomenal as a true freshman at UNLV, but two, has the high upside to be a developmental quarterback in that room. And there's no better room for him to wind up in then Lincoln Riley and USC want to talk Jaden Maiava, talk a few other transfer portal targets that will be on campus. Before we do, just want to say thank you to you guys and a shout out to the USC fans. This is a program the fellas love talking about. The amount of support you guys consistently show in the comment section, it, it really means a lot. We love talking this program. Can't thank you guys enough for all the support. If you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Dill going to give you the tee box here. Let's start with Jaden Maiava coming over from UNLV. I know you watched a little bit of them. How we feel? And they, I think they needed a developmental prospect yes. to kind of fit in between that Julian Lewis and Miller Moss class. And I think the way Miller Moss played, it, it, did, it probably did scare off Malachi Nelson to an extent where he thought he was going to be the next guy after Caleb. And Miller Moss looks like he's kind of grabbed control of that room. And that's not a bad thing. But that's why I think getting Jaden Maiava to ultimately commit or hopefully commit would be huge because they need someone up through the pipeline to kind of be in that gap between when Julian Lewis comes and, and obviously. Yeah, and, and to me it represents one. You also needed a backup quarterback. And so yeah. when you're looking for like a, a, in that quarterback room, the two things you probably wanted in the transfer quarterback you were going to bring in is one, youth, right? Like you said, it's going to be a developmental quarterback. You know Miller Moss is going to be the guy – in 2024 so you have the youth part you have the the starting experience part as well winning nine games as a true freshman for UNLV but what I think it entices me most about this potential get for USC is the upside I mean Jaden Maiava made a lot of power five programs look really stupid for passing up on him in that 2023 class 6'4 220 pounds threw for over 3,000 yards 17 touchdowns on a 63 percent completion percentage as a true freshman deal you look at the top true freshmen in that 2023 class. Arch Manning sat the bench. Jackson Arnold sat the bench. Nico I sat the bench. Malachi Nelson sat the bench. Like It is extremely rare to have true freshmen come into college football and play to the level Jaden Maiava did. So not only does he have the starting, power, uh, starting experience, not power five experience, starting experience, but also the upside that Jaden Maiava brings, what he could be in 2025 or 2026, that's extremely enticing as well. And that's the big thing. I mean, the traits you kind of saw, I think, A, the calmness he'd have in the pocket yes. when guys were kind of around him. You didn't see the eyes drop. You didn't see that fear. And then obviously the big thing is the arm. I mean, when you see him be able to rip the ball around the field, he can hit any part, portion of it. And, and just kind of play in rhythm the way I think Lincoln Riley's going to want them to play in rhythm. And when you saw Miller Moss really playing good football, you saw them within the offense playing in rhythm, getting the ball out on time accurately to all point portions of the field. And that's what I think you saw when Jaden Maiava was good. He was playing that way. Obviously, there were points he got out of that and, and started making some throws where, again, just, just trying to take chances you can't really take. So he did throw some picks last year, but that's where the development comes. And that's kind of what excites you as USC is like, well, now you got Lincoln Riley and, and maybe even Cliff Kingsbury working on him you might have a guy who you can really mold into being a kind of a star. I think all the, like he's a big ball of clay and all the traits are there. And I, I, when you watch him as a freshman, like I was completely dumbfounded on how is this kid not on a power five program? Like coming yeah. out, I mean, six, four, 220 pounds. He has an howitzer of an arm. And you said a 10 interceptions. Those interceptions come from, yes, he was a uh, lacked experience. was a freshman playing college football, but more importantly, like he's got a ton of confidence. Like he is not afraid to rip it in a tight window and maybe a little bit too much confidence at times in his arm. But that's what you love to see out of a quarterback. And again, you kind of work on the decision making and the processing. I view this kid 
as not only a backup quarterback, but a quarterback that in the future for this USC program could be an absolute game changer. And again, you mentioned his legs, 6'4", 220. He can work, he can move. And he's a guy that can extend plays, keep his eyes downfield, throws on the run phenomenally well, but also can can pick up the hard yards if he wants to as well. And Dill, my favorite stat when you're talking transfer quarterbacks, do they win football games? It's a part of the reason why I loved Will Howard and that potential fit for USC. It's a part of the reason why I love Jaden Miyabi. This UNLV team was a bottom dweller in the Mountain West Conference. They did not win very many games. He comes in as a true freshman, wins the job two games into the season, cut up Michigan in the second game in the second half. I remember the boys being frustrated about that. And they won nine games, competed for a Mountain West championship. This guy is not only a high upside quarterback, but an absolute winner as well. I think that is always underrated. Like, okay, well, the guy didn't win there. It was this team. It was this. It was that. Like, if you're a quarterback especially, you have a lot of dictating or dictation, I will, I will say, of who wins the yes. football game. So to be able to step in – in transform a UNLV program that, as you mentioned, really was struggling for a while to, to go take them to that game, go play really well in that bowl game against Kansas, obviously a very good power five team and look not out of place at all. Like that's exactly the traits you're looking for. Be able to will that team back. Just like a, it just had a bit of a gamer feel to them that again, I mean, that's like you see it or you don't. I, I feel like you, you kind of saw enough of it. To think you say it. gamer, and like I, I was just about to say that to like close out the discussion on Jaden Maiava. Like you, you, we talked about it with Caleb Williams, and you talked about it with Bryce Young at Alabama. It's like the it factor, and I don't know how to totally describe the it factor, but when there's like a play to be made, if there's nothing there, he can make nothing into something. He's a playmaker. And he's a guy that still is learning to play within the offense and not try to do too much. But what he showed as a true freshman, like under the tutelage of Lincoln Riley, this would be a massive get for USC Dill. There's two other targets for USC also going to be on campus. And at a position group that we said for USC is a must get heading into the Big Ten. And that is bolstering up this defensive line. A lot of guys leaving the program. Isaiah Rikes coming from Texas A&M is not a guy that is going to stuff the stat sheet in terms of sacks and tackles for a loss, but one of those guys that is going to elevate a defense, no question in my mind. And as a Michigan fan, like I I understand the importance of having those big dogs up front that are not necessarily the penetrators, not necessarily the guys making plays, but allow everyone else on the defense to make plays. Isaiah Reich, 6'1", 327 pounds, takes on double teams extremely well would be a massive addition to this USC defensive line that, again, is trying to get that physicality heading into the big time. And that was the issue. Like, they brought in a lot of talent on that defensive line, and, and frankly, they made a lot of plays, but they also had, like, some severe issues in terms of leaving big creases and getting run on and having yeah, just those issues, like, down to down where it wasn't always pretty. Like, you can make the plays, and that's good. It's good to have Bear Alexander-type guys or Kyan Bars who are penetrators can get inside the, or get into the backfield and be disruptive, but you still need the guys like Isaiah Rikes and some of these other guys who, again, are probably going to have like 10 tackles on the year, but have done a lot of things that I think coaches shouldn't go on or shouldn't go unnoticed by coaches. And again, you were flipping that defensive staff over for a reason. I don't think they hit on the portal. Well, I don't think they developed well. I don't think they evaluated guys well enough and, and created a team defense. And, and this would be the type of guy you need to pair up with Bear Alexander and some yes. of those other guys to allow him to make plays still that is Bear because he's a playmaker. But you also got to give these linebackers some help because they took a beating in terms of their performance. And part of it was warranted, but I don't think the defensive line gave him a ton of favors either. Two things that you said that I, I totally agree with. One, you look at that USC defensive line last year. Like Kyan Bars, he could get in the backfield, make some plays. Bear Alexander certainly could. They didn't have a guy like Isaiah Rikes on that defensive line. They had a bunch of penetrators, a bunch of guys that could make the tackles or else. They didn't have the guys who could take on double teams, win at the point of attack, and kind of win the line of scrimmage. Isaiah Rikes would be that guy. Like you look, Bear Alexander was that that playmaker. Kyan Bars wasn't that big body. Benton wasn't that big body. They were missing that piece on that defensive line. I think Isaiah Rikes could be that guy, but I think you made the best point. The linebacker room took massive criticism and rightfully so. I mean, Tacky Curtis was lost out there. Shouldn't have been playing as a true freshman. Mason Cobb uh, clearly regressed from the Oklahoma state based version of Mason Cobb. 
yes, the linebacker play wasn't great. I don't think they were done any favors by a defensive line that wasn't keeping them clean. And so you bring in a guy like Isaiah Rikes who can take on double teams, not allow offensive linemen to get to the second level and pick up linebackers. That's going to be massive. So not I mean, only does that do a little bit of like creating that like cloud of dust kind of thing in the middle where it's like you can't have giant holes because when you yeah. let running backs get going full head of steam, not have to make a cut and do anything, just go take a linebacker one-on-one. That's a hard assignment, and you like your guys to make more of them than they did. But at the end of the day, you need better defensive linemen who are sturdier, are not as – now, certain, their game isn't predicated around shooting gaps. It's you got to have guys who can take blocks on and eat them up. And then, Isaiah Rice it, it improves the defensive line, but he also improves. He's going to improve the play of the linebackers, and I think that's what's most important. Is you're getting a guy that's just going to make your defense better. It seemed always as if USC's defensive line individually would play good. Like there'd be guys flashing all over the place. As a team, obviously did not play good. I think Isaiah Rice helps make that team defense play a little bit better. The last guy I want to talk about and another really interesting name to monitor for USC fans is Javier Darrett coming over from North Dakota state. Now, obviously the Matt Entz connection is there, but I think that's more important than gets enough credit because Matt Entz comes to USC. He knows what it takes to win football games at the power five level. He wouldn't offer Javier Dare. He wouldn't say Javier Dare. We want you to come visit. We want you to come on this team. If he didn't believe, that a guy like Javier Derrick could make that step to the Power 5 level. 6'2", 280, maybe a little bit undersized, but you look at that North Dakota State defense. That is how you want USC to play defense. Physicality, winning at the point of attack, not missing tackles. Javier Derrick played a massive part in that. USC should absolutely welcome a guy like Javier Derrick to that defensive line that not only you're getting a good football player, but continuing to add to that depth as well. And another guy who, I mean, was very productive. I mean, four sacks, four and a half TFLs, like those are, I, I don't mean to sit up here and say that guy doesn't like that type of guy doesn't matter. That guy who can make more tackles than what probably Isaiah Rikes will do. Like that matters. And you saw what Bear Alexander did. I just like the idea of bringing in guys who complement each other more. And you're thinking more as a team rather than just like, okay, who's the highest ranked defensive lineman? Let's go get him. And it doesn't matter that it was Jack Sullivan. Barry Alexander and Kion Bars, who all kind of play a similar game, and you didn't necessarily have that one tacker, that guy who wants to like sit in the middle and just hammer it out and be physical. Like I, that to me is it's again, it's not like you don't want guys who can be productive like Barry Alexander is, but I like the fact that it looks like they might be going to more complementary style, more complimentary complementary players. And we noted like this USC staff, they're, they've taken a, a change to how they want to build this roster. They're not as interested in the flash, right? I mean, you saw last year on the recruiting trail in the transfer portal, it was the flashy names. Like, yeah, you're going to the D3 levels and getting a wide receiver. On the high school recruiting trail, you're going and getting some of those diamond in the rough three-star guys that you think can be ball players. I think the evals are a little bit different, and I'm a massive fan of it, right? Dan Lynn, Matt Entz, I, I trust those guys to get the right players into this program, continue to monitor it. We might even see Jaden Maiava get a commitment later this weekend. We'll hop on, talk about it. For USC fans, I think there's a lot of optimism to be had within this program and what they're doing, especially on the defensive side of the ball to change it around. USC fans, can't thank you guys enough for rocking with the boys again. This is a, a program we love talking about. The support you guys show, it means a lot. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to y'all later. Peace.